Now that we've got our drop button figured out, in this video we're going to set up and make our use button functional. So if you recall when we were initially writing our use function in our pickups class, we have this function here, use item, and the parameter it takes in is the player trying to use the item. Now what we are going to be doing here is just like with our drop item, how we call drop item which simply makes a call to the server let me find it that you know does basic things like check if the client has the item if it does drop it we're going to call a function similar to this that makes a call from the client to the server to use the item so then from there it's simply going to get the owner of this component and pass it into the pickups class, well into the pickups class's function to use item. So we can go ahead and get started. So click on our be use button, make it on clicked event, and from here we can actually simply copy everything except for drop item. So just copy all this. and remove drop item. Now from here we are simply going to create a C++ function to do what I just said. It, this video should be a lot shorter because we did the majority of the setup in the uh, drop item video. So let's go ahead and create that. So you function blueprint callable void use item and the type is going to that we're passing in is a pickups we're just going to call it item create a definition now let's create the server function so I'm just going to copy and paste and change it from drop to use now create definitions for our validate and our implementation function right, now let's head over to our CPP and figure out here they are our server functions then our I'm going to put it right above use item so we're going to do the exact same thing where we simply are going to do a check so we return true or false based on whether or not we have the item. If we do not have the item, we will be disconnected from the, the server. Because when your validate function returns false, it pretty much disconnects whoever called it. So for use item, we're just simply going to call server underscore use item and pass in the parameter item. Now in here, we're going to be making that call to the server I mean, uh, to our pickups item, our use item function. So, if role get owner role equals role authority, we can do that. Now we need to get the um, running to cast from a actor. So with get owner, as you can see, it returns an A actor, we need to cast that to a survival character. So we can do that actually inside the condition of the if statement. So if a survival character, just going to call it player, equals cast a survival character, and what we're going to cat, we're going to change from to a survival character is the A actor. So get owner. And if that returns true, meaning player is valid, we can simply pass in player to the item for the use item function. So item, use item, and pass in player. Now control shift B to build. Uh, 
Oh, there it goes. Alrighty. So where do we have issues? I think that I include that at the top. Right, we need to include our survival character. So include survival character dot h and then build. And that should be fine. Unless I overlook something else. Here we are. Alright, so that was all we needed. Now from the inventory component, all we need to do is call use item and hook everything up just the way we did before. So our item reference is going to be passed into use item, then use item is going to call used or drop item, which simply is kind of like a refresh for our inventory. Yeah, because it removes it out of it on the, on the client. So, let's see if it actually works. Pick up our water. Click it. And press use. Yep. And our thirst went up. So, let's do... Food and health. Alright, so that we need to fix. I'm wondering... Oh, I don't think it's removing it from our inventory, so that might be why. So use the food. I don't think that did anything. I and I hit drop like an idiot. Oh, and a crash. Alright, so let's see what's going on. Let me double check. So I'm trying to think when it uses the item, it might still have it in it. So we then we destroy it. Alright, so we can actually get rid of it. Yeah, so remove item from inventory. Pass an item. Actually that won't. Now that the item is getting destroyed. So let's just do a quick test again. Grab our food. Use. Okay, that goes up. Alright, so there's nothing in there. Health. Use. Increases our health. And water. Increases our water. Alright, now I just gotta figure out why it is screwing with that. And not actually removing it. Well, it's taken up the one slot. So we can try printing out our actual inventory items and see what that results as. So print. No. Let's do that in the constructor. Which is actually right here. So print string, uncheck const or context sensitive. Uh, can't print out the array. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, we can loop it. <coughs> so for each. So we're going to print out each element of the array and just see what it looks like. So this should print out nothing, which it does. Get health and water. VP health and water. Click use, close and reopen. Close and reopen. Okay, so it's still showing it in our inventory. So what I'm thinking is uh, do, do, do. Items is still holding a pointer to the pickup 
but even though the pickup has been destroyed, like it's just because the pickup has been destroyed, it's a null ref it's just gonna be a null pointer. There's nothing there. So we can try another check. If item equals or if pickup equals item or pickup equals null pointer. So I'm wondering if trying to do a comparison with a null pointer would cause a crash or not. So let's call it real quick. So what was it? Remove item from inventory. Item. Now when we use the item, this might cause a crash because it is trying to compare a null pointer. Well, compare an item to a null pointer. Let's see. And crash. Which it actually did not. I really thought that would have crashed. Just to be safe, I'm going to double check outside of the editor. I'm going to grab another client too. Because I want to test and make sure when he actually gets killed, everything's good as well and gone. Let's do that. Oh, dang it. That guy. Okay. Health and water. So I'm going to use the health. So that way I still have water. Alright, so the only thing on the ground should be just the water, which that is the case. Wait for the body to spawn, make sure it's not in it. Alright, so that is good to go. So let's go through and reiterate real quick. Alright, so what we did is, actually let's get rid of the printing, which is no longer necessary. Alright, so what we did when we click our, where is it, when we click our use button, we are getting our inventory, and if our inventory is valid, we simply call our, call our use item function in the inventory which as you can see here that is set to blueprint callable which is why we can call it and we pass in the item reference the item reference being um, the, the item that we clicked on in the inventory so we have it set up to where the item reference can only be valid so then after that we call our used or dropped item function which simply loops through our client version of the inventory and if it finds it what it does is it goes through and will remove it from this array here. Then after it's completed, it calls our refresh inventory function, which literally just kills all the children, or gets rid of all the children inside of the inventory wrap or wrap box, which is just a bunch of these elements, our inventory elements. And then it repopulates our inventory with our function that we made there, as if we just opened it up. So, that should have been a fair amount shorter, I hope, than the previous two videos. And I will see you for the next one.